And now, your Precision 18 forecast. News 18. Weather from where you live. A good chunk of our rainfall so far for the summer has occurred in two little periods. June 25th through the 30th and July 8th through the 13th. And in those two small periods, 86% of all of our rainfall since June 1st has fallen here at the TV station. We've had more than 10 inches of rain since June the 1st. At the Purdue Airport, 78% of all the rainfall has occurred in those two little bits of time since summer started. And then Covington, 92% of the rain uh, that in this summer has occurred during those two periods. And there are some spots in our southern counties that upwards of 97% of all the rainfall since June 1st has occurred in these two little periods of wetter weather. So what's causing all the wetness? This has been the pattern for a while. Very hot, dry weather up here and then all around big horseshoe shaped upper ridge north of our area. So major drought, epic heat going on up here where it's much cooler and wetter down here. And this is acting, this big upper ridge is actually acting as kind of a block. So any little disturbance that you get down here coming up this way kind of gets blocked and it's very slow to move out of the area. Also on the underbelly of this hot upper ridge, we get showers and storms. So that's why it's just been so wet. We've been stuck in this pattern for a while, but at least we're kind of getting out of it now. Thick wildfire smoke coming in tomorrow from the northwest in that area of drought and heat. So the sun will be obscured a little bit and then some storms Thursday evening rather than Friday. That's the new trend today. Can't rule out this becoming a level two severe weather situation on a scale of one to five and then drier weather is the key word in this forecast, but a lot of thick wildfire smoke coming in tomorrow. That's going to trim our high temperature down 90, but still hot feeling like 98. Southwest breeze after a little patchy fog in the morning. Smokiness thinning a little bit on Thursday. Some storms after 530, 90 to the high, feeling like 100, but a strong southwest wind blowing, gusting more than 30 miles an hour at times. Here comes your thick smoke. This is tonight and into tomorrow. Really thick tomorrow afternoon. Check that out. That sun will be dimmed. It easily be a 95 degree day if not for such thick smoke. That smoke pulls away, thins a little bit though for Thursday, and that will allow for some of these storms to come in. And here they are. This is Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Again, clusters, little bows of storms right in this zone right here. Again, the biggest factor of not making this a solid line will be the smoke causing some issues with the storm development, but we're still going to get some notice by eight. There's a pretty good line of storms coming in from the northwest and then those pull away, but we may still get a little rain on Friday before we start to dry out gradually and we really dry out in a bigger way next weekend. So after 92 Thursday, low 80s actually on Friday, but then it starts to heat up again. Upper 80s Monday, 90 Tuesday with more thick smoke coming in. And now your News 18 traffic report sponsored by Tipmont REMC. Well, road closures really ramping up now. Again, we've got 28 that's still closed east of Romney, US 35 near Greentown still closed, but other roads will be closed. Highway 18 west of Round Grove, right where 231 and 18 cross west of there. It will be closed until August the 7th for construction. 32, as we mentioned in the news, uh, newscast will be closed Friday through August 5th. This is west of Crawfordsville out towards Steam Corner here in Fountain County where a 32 and 41 meet and also we get overnight lane closures on I-65 near Roselawn north of Fair Oaks July 13th through the 15th and more overnight lane closures. Be aware of traffic slowdowns and jams here during the overnight hours north of Remington on I-65. Chad, thank you very much. Well, today health experts are sounding the alarm about new fears over the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. How it can lead to a potentially deadly disorder when Lawmakers we come back. Lawmakers are calling. Would stifle restrictive voting measures nationwide. I'm Skyler Henry in Washington with the latest and more on President Biden's Philadelphia trip, emphasizing voting rights.
watching News 18 at 5. News from where you live. Well, the FDA has issued a new warning about one of the coronavirus vaccines in use in the United States. The agency says the Johnson & Johnson vaccine may be linked to a very rare neurological disorder known as Guillain-Barre syndrome. The FDA says it has seen 100 preliminary reports of Guillain-Barre out of nearly 13 million people who've received the one shot. 95 of those cases required hospitalization and one person has died. Johnson & Johnson says the chance of getting the disorder is very low. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines have not been found to have a similar risk of that complication. Well, President Joe Biden is putting voting rights front and center today with a major address in Philadelphia. The president and dozens of Texas state lawmakers are calling on Congress to approve national voting rights legislation. As Skylar Henry reports, it comes as several Republican-led states have passed restrictive voting measures. President Biden went to the historic place where the U.S. Constitution was signed to push for the sanctity of the ballot box. There's an unfolding assault taking place in America today, an attempt to suppress and subvert the right to vote in fair and free elections. His speech comes as a handful of mostly Republican-led states have passed restrictive voting measures in less than two weeks after the U.S. Supreme Court upheld two Arizona voting rules. One of those rules bans third-party collection of mail-in ballots and the other allows election workers to discard ballots cast in the wrong precinct. The 21st century Jim Crow assault is real and we're going to challenge it vigorously. President Biden has thrown his support behind two voting rights bills. One is named for the late civil rights icon and Congressman John Lewis. The other, the House passed for the People Act, which was blocked by Senate Republicans. More than 50 Texas state Democratic lawmakers fled a special session in Austin for Washington, D.C. They're demanding Congress take action. It's the second time this year they've walked out to stop their Republican-led state legislature from passing new voting measures that include adding ID requirements for mail-in ballots and giving more powers to partisan poll watchers. Texas Democrats will use everything in our power to fight back. I think it's pretty obvious that this is nothing more than a political stunt. Texas GOP Senator John Cornyn blasted the move and Governor Greg Abbott has threatened to have them arrested and brought back to the State House when they return. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Well, the White House says Vice President Kamala Harris will meet this week with the Texas legislators who fled their state last week. Uh, she announced that the Democratic National Committee will add $25 million to its existing efforts to register and turn out voters. Well, the rain is finally moving away and the sun finally returning to Greater Lafayette. Chad's here with a final check of the forecast coming up after a quick break. No, the thing is, like, it, the mic is too heavy and the shirt is too light, so, like, it pulls it down. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you.
You're watching News 18 at 5. News from where you live. Well, just a couple little lingering isolated showers in the area. A few right along Highway 18 and then a few along I-74 all jetting out of here. Those will be out once we get towards 7, 8 o'clock this evening. And then tomorrow, a smoky sky with 90, but it's going to feel more like the upper 90s, Jeff and Sam. All right, uh, Chad, thank you very much. Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We'll be back at 6 with the latest. Until then, head to WLFI.com. We'll see you in about a half an hour. Ugh. Yep. A suspected gas explosion sends one person to the hospital. A surprise utility bill as one typical new county agency forgets to pay its utilities for about a year. You know, Jeff, I was thinking, what if we, uh, as, as homeowners, forgot to pay our bill? Yeah, I mean. But apparently they have some clause that government agencies and essential services can't be shut down. I don't. But if you're, now. Uh, uh, so they racked up a $40,000 bill. Yeah, that's a, that is a very slippery slope. Got a few more storms ahead for Thursday. Uh, I was thinking of my nine seconds. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, there we there we go. Drying out now, but some storms by Thursday evening. Okay. Well, we're drying out now, but we've got more storms ahead for Thursday evening, along with some severe weather risks. We'll talk more about that and also some of this thick wildfire smoke coming back in tonight. Drying out now, but we've got more storms ahead just in time for Thursday evening. The latest on any severe weather risk tonight.
shoot. Were you here this morning? Okay. And then tomorrow you go back to mornings? I have to watch. Look at this on my computer because the way it. Sure it's on. Mic check one, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. Mic check one, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. I'm hoping the rain holds off. Okay, Nolan, it's my, my goal is to make you laugh maniacally once a day. You bet. Mic check one, two, three for tonight, for tomorrow. Back to you, Linda.
Coming up on News 18 at 6. An explosion here at Waterford Court Apartments has left one person injured and two families displaced. Coming up on News 18 at 6, we'll tell you what the Lafayette Fire Department is saying caused that explosion and how the Red Cross is helping families affected. Tonight on News 18 at 6, Tippecanoe County Community Corrections is behind on its utility bills. Joe Paul tonight will tell us the financial consequences the agency now faces. And parents are sharing their thoughts about the